Hello Collectors, it's Steven here with another SH Monster Arts review for you. And this time we're taking a look at the SH Monster Arts Mothra Imago and Larva Special Color Version Set. So this Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive, which means you could only order this through the US or the Japanese Bandai Web Shop, and only from there, is the first US P Bandai exclusive. And considering orders have already closed and people now have to buy this on the aftermarket, you're going to have to pay more than MSRP one way or another, unless the seller wants to take a loss. So reviews for this set are very important. So let's cut to the chase and take a look to see whether or not this set's worth adding into your collection. Nope. It's not. That's um, <clears throat> that's my review pretty much in a nutshell. Um, so yeah, it, you know, I, normally I, I do the the whole presenter thing. I, I kind of do that, and I'll take things off to the side. I'll come up with a nice script. I'll try to put things in the most I, I don't know the the most educated form possible. I'll try to use words that try to convey what I'm trying to say. I'm I'm not doing it. Um, I I I don't want to review this set um I, I don't know guys um but i got it i said i would review it and i'm gonna do it but i'm gonna do it differently i'm just gonna do it kind of like this and we're gonna go over all the different points that you would get in one of my reviews and that's gonna be it so we're gonna look at um let's look at the imago first this is going to be the whole review. This is going to be the whole review. So for the Imago, we get a gimmick here. Whoop, there we go. Um, or at least the feature that it's supposed to be. Is that this is supposed to be Mothra when she is seen at night. So she has sort of a dark blue-ish, almost purple paint application throughout the figure. Right? So you can see the compound eyes are pretty nice. That's pretty good. When you look up at the antenna here, though, you can see there's torn paint, which is kind of trash on mine. That's an issue with this figure, quality control. With the paint, you'll see in certain spots where it looks really goopy on the main body, the thorax, the abdomen, and in other spots it kind of looks thin. There was someone who had a nice big old paint drip across the eye in the Super Articulated Kaiju Collector group on Facebook. I'm, again, I'm not plugging my own group. <laughs> um, yeah, quality control issues out the wazoo. Talking about paint and such and quality control issues on mine, you can see there looks to be glue here on the wing. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? Um, we've got some marks over here on this side of the wing which aren't that great. We got some scratching over here. Hope that's coming up clear enough. Yeah, you can see those yellow scratch marks right there at the bottom. And flip it over here. So you can see some more marks over on this wing. You can see it looks like this wing, this portion of the wing at least, was moved while the paint was drying. Yeah, so quality control is pretty much um, all across the board. There are people who have reported fingerprints just right in the wing. Oh, you can even see a crack in the paint right there. Yeah, that's no good. Uh, yeah, fingerprints on the wing. Um, people have had, like, paint peeling. You can, you can even see here, right here, the paint is very dark compared to the head. I mean, just look at that difference. That is so much darker than up here. And then here, I'm going to compare it with the original Mothra in a bit. But if you look back here, you can see white. Not that purple, that dark blue. That's just straight up white. That's, that's not even the nighttime coloration. And you can even see the bright orange there. Don't know what that is. Now right here, the blending of the paint, it looks wonderful, right? That looks really gorgeous. So, you know... They still screw things up. Clearly, you can even still see a scratch. But when they get things right, they, they do a really awesome job. Okay? So that's about it for uh, the Imago. If 
for right now. Well, you know what? Let's just do the articulation at the same time as well. Okay, kids? Okay. So the articulation is pretty straightforward. We have the little mandibles here. They're on ball joints. They turn around. They move a little bit. Um, wouldn't move them too much. You have the antenna, which actually move. They do move. This one was stuck on mine during my unboxing. You probably saw um, me actually rip the paint because it was stuck. We have the mouth. I think these are actually the mandible. I don't know what these would be called. Um, it's on hinge. There we go. That opens and closes. The wings. The four wings right here, they move up and down on hinges. This one on mine is really difficult to move up. It's really difficult to move, period. And then the back, the hind wings, they move down. They don't really move up too far. So you can get Mothra to kind of look like uh, something out of Star Wars. That's pretty cool. Something stupid, though, they continued with the metal pins. That's really dumb. Then we have the legs, these fiddly bits. Uh, they're a bit sturdier. There are ball joints here at the base, hinges, and they do actually swivel around just a teeny bit. Um, there are swivels here where this portion plugs in. One of them likes to fall off. I don't know which one, but I've done it before. But I guess I fixed it. We got double access barbell style ball joint here. And then ball joints all down here. So you can move Mothra around. Really cool, right? So you can get Mothra to point up like that. So you're going to go back on your stand. Um, articulation has also been an issue with this figure for many others. Because, come on, get in there. People have reported stuck joints because of the paint. So aside from just having, you know, bad quality paint to begin with, we get stuck joints because of the paint. So now we're going to take a look at the larva here. And the larva is supposed to be when it's wet. So like when it emerges from the water. It's all nice and shiny. The detailing is really nice. You can see little liver spots. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see liver spots, which is cool. Blue eyes. I mean, the coloration is fantastic. For a modern day SH Monster Arts, the figure is great looking. The figure is great looking. It does have one critical downside to it, which I'll talk about in the comparison section with the original, which is coming up in like, you know, the next minute or so. But for articulation, it's pretty much just a tail, ball joints, and it can do this. So you can make it look like a little inchworm. These little pincer things, mandibles, whatever you want to call them, they're on ball joints, they move around. And then the mouth opens and closes, like that. And if you're smart enough, you can already see the issue. Okay? Um, really quick, some are going to ask this, but uh, yes, you can use the web effect with this larva. Okay? All right. So that's taken care of. So speaking of effects, um, Mothra, the Imago, comes with some stuff. And she comes with two antenna beams. Antennae beams, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the way that these work, um, they're kind of nice looking, actually. There's a nice white stripe down the middle of the yellow. So it's pretty cool. Um, they're stupid. So you open them up like that. And you clamp them onto the antenna. You don't slip them on. They're not replacement parts. You just clamp them on. And the way that it works is you actually have the beam side. And then you just have the attachment side. And the instructions show that you're supposed to put the side with the beam facing in. Right? So kind of like this. So... Like that. And there you go. 
So um, I'm only going to do one because you just... Let's just hold that up. Pew! There you go. All right. So you know what that looks like. Now, the fun part isn't getting it on. It's getting it off. Right? Because you have to clamp it on such a small space. So I advise you not to clamp it on all the way. So this way you can just pop it off like that. All right. And the other accessory that Mothra comes with, aside from the base, the clear base, and the support arm, is we get this clear cradle. Now, for Mothra, the way that you'd think you'd use it, and I've used this before too in this review, even in the unboxing, is it just kind of fits in sort of something like this because you think that little loop goes right here in front. And yeah, that does work, but you'll kind of notice Mothra leaning back. The way that it's designed to be used is like this with that loop, whoop, with that loop going back towards the back. So it's like this. So this way Mothra is a little sturdier, right? So that's how it's designed to be used. Now, throughout the review, like I said before, and in some other videos, I have it the opposite way. But the way that it's intended to be used is like this, with the loop going back to the back of Mothra. You can even check that in the instructions, okay? All right, so um, now we're going to do a comparison with the originals. Here you go. So the original has a nice bright paint application. The special color version does not. It's a little darker. I mean, that's really it. That's nice white. It's not. The eye color is different, which is really cool. The eye color, that's, a, that's, a, that's actually a nice change. I actually like that one. Aquamarine, that might be, compared to that one. I think it's aquamarine. Could be wrong, but... Okay, so what I wanted to talk about, um, you know, I'll just take her off the stand here. We'll plus put that one down, and then we'll take this one off. Um, just take a look at the backside of the special color version Mothra, and then just take a look at the backside of the original here. Did um, did they? They repaint. I mean, I mean, I know that it's just literally a repaint, but I mean, it, it's the same sculpt with a different paint scheme. But um, I don't know. Did they literally repaint old Mothras? I don't know, there, guys. I don't know. But um, yeah. Um, let's do a quick look at the underside of these two, because that's always fun. You got to see it from the top. So here's a look at the bottom. In three, two, one. There you go. So it looks like different from the bottom. Uh, the joints are more obvious on the special color version for the arms than the original. Like you can see they look like little balls. All right. Now we're going to do the larva. Okay. Here they are side by side. So the first one has very iffy paint apps. It's all just this dry brushing. I don't know. It doesn't look that great. Especially all these years later. Whereas the new one it actually has paint application. Like it looks like something you would expect to buy. Something from uh, Bondi. The only issue with this is it does look a little thick. Um, yeah, I mean, eh, I think the actual quality of the application could be a little nicer, but I like this scheme more than this, because this just looks like a very quick dry brush job that they got out the door, whereas this is, you know, a, an accurate, nice looking color scheme, but it does look a little, I guess you might say cheap. Uh, the finish, I don't necessarily think does this the most favors in the world but eh, you know it is it is what it is it's still nice i like this one more than i do like this one uh to finish off this comparison though this seems to be a common problem look at the mouth straight crooked straight 
Crooked. Straight. Crooked. Straight. Crooked. Okay, and um, real quick before we finish this up, here's a look at the original base that we got with the original Mothra. You know, very nice. I mean, you know, could could be could maybe be better, but um, you know, it's nice. At least it shows they cared instead of you know blanks. But um, here's here's a general size comparison. You got the SH Monster Arts uh, Godzilla Birth version, and you got the SH Figure Arts Ultraman. So um, that's that that that's pretty close to wrapping up the review. Um, the only thing I gotta say is that this thing is riddled with quality control issues. So many paint issues on this thing here. Uh, the the current running theory is they just used too thick of a paint application on this that clogged up the joints, if you will, and caused a whole bunch of people to have broken wings, mouth broke in a couple places, the antenna, the one, the antenna on mine got stuck, yeah, a whole bunch of issues there. For the larva, it seems like there's a common issue with the mouth not being inserted correctly, and then I got a picture from someone, I'm going to address that, I got a picture from someone where it looked like there was a puncture somewhere around here. And um, some of you may have seen the video that I posted shortly after uploading my unboxing of that where I said, if you have quality control issues, send your pictures to me. I got a nice, sizable response from that. Uh, 12 emails. I got 12 emails. So if you sent me an email... Thank you for that. Thank you. It was most appreciated. But uh, I decided to take the review in a different route, as you can see here. Um, very disappointed in this set, to say the least. I think the set, um, to not mince words here, is kind of garbage. I think it's kind of garbage, and I think it's absolutely... I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they expect us to fork over $140 or thereabouts... I think with a shipping discount, it came out to be like 112 or something um, ahead of time to not know what the product is going to look like, have relatively beautiful prototypes, and then ship this out to customers. Okay, they do have customer service support, but the problem is one, they are in fact hiding behind a language barrier, hiding because they know that there are issues that. You would have an English that don't necessarily translate over into the language that the customer service representatives would be using because it may not necessarily be Japanese. So no one understands anything. Hey, how are you going to get that issue resolved? And then if the issue, the legitimate issue does not fall within their manufacturing guidelines, you know, so if it's a small paint application, so the wings on mine, those are screwed up. That, you know, I would throw a fit, but it's not going to get me anywhere. Um, they're not going to do anything about it. So unless yours is really screwed up and you're forceful, um, they're not going to help you. And this isn't just me saying it on no basis. You know, I, I've got no grounds to back this up. Um, I'm in a pretty large group with people who have had issues with both of these figures, and they've contacted Bandai about it. And let's just say mm, I know a little bit more than I'm supposed to. However, if you got this set from Bandai, you paid with PayPal. You have 180 days from the point of purchase to file a claim. That's all I'm going to say. If you don't get your help, take of it what you will. Take of that statement what you will. So, um, what does this mean for the future, um, for me with SH Monster Arts? Um, so Space Godzilla set was just like literally announced within the last 36 hours. Uh, I don't know, leaning towards not, but I might cause I love Space Godzilla, like one of my top five. I have the Batra set pre-ordered because it was kind of a do or don't situation and I just did cause I can sell it at least if I don't like it. Um, but, uh, Godzilla Jr. not getting it. This has completely killed my faith in repaints. I was intent 
I was dead set on buying a Biolante repaint. Probably not going to happen now. I don't know. We're just going to have to see. We're going to have to take it on a case-by-case basis. And thankfully, I, I know resources where after it's released, I can still get it. But um, yeah, I'm not as much of a fan as um, I used to be of SH Monster Arts. And it, right before Biolante got released, I, I, I pushed really hard for that to get made. Um, yeah. So it's hard to, it's hard to, I don't know, it's hard to say that. Um, but anyway, let's end this review on a somewhat positive note, aside from me calling this garbage. There are other fantastic kaiju figures on the market. And the only thing I can say is, to sort of make up for this review, because I'm just as disappointed in it as you guys are, I want to start reviewing those more often too. Because even though there's a whole bunch of new cool stuff that's coming out, there's still spots in your collection for these guys that a lot of people don't have. And the only thing that I can say is, instead of blowing your money away on the latest and greatest thing that Bandai is putting out, there are plenty of other things on the market you could put that money towards that are millions of times better. And you will be even more satisfied. If you're thinking about getting the Mothra Special Color version set, get the original. Just get the original. So, that about wraps up the review. That's also my subtle way of saying I'm going to be digging into my kaiju backlog. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm, I'm sorry. So much this review didn't turn out the way you probably expected it, but I'm only going to give as much effort as Bandai's going to give it. And I hope you guys give the video a thumbs up, you subscribe, and you look forward to some of the other kaiju videos that are coming very, very soon. I hope you all enjoy your weekend, or whenever you're watching this, enjoy the rest of your week, and I will catch you all in the next video.